All right, let's check this out. This is a video from Vertaga called Why You Should Stop Making Music Your Personality. As somebody who made music my personality for a very long time when I was in my teens and 20s, uh, sadly, I can tell you from firsthand experience that making music your entire personality is not the way, people. It's not the way. This is a public service announcement. If you're watching this, this video might be for you. I'm, I'm trying to help you help yourself. This is why you should stop making music your personality by Vertaga. Let's check it out. Before we get any further into the video, have you checked out my Spotify playlist? I add new stuff to it pretty much any time I find a cool new song. So I update it usually a couple times a week with some new stuff. So if you are looking for new music to check out, hit the link in the description of this video. Music, a universal language that transcends cultures, boundaries, and backgrounds. It has the power to evoke emotions, spark mm -hmm. memories, and transport us to another time and place. It gives us a sense of hope. <laughs> I like this uh, Patrick Bateman vibing to some Cardi. Meaning, and especially care, <laughs> except for music by well, DJ Khaled. Yeah. What's the bus? How much your pickle? How much the glass? How much the glass? God did. God did. How much the glass? God did. How much the chain? How much the chain? How much the chain? God did. You know, for such a simple yet complex subject, people, especially on the internet, make it seem much bigger than it is. Especially on this godforsaken app TikTok, which got all of those. Yeah, I mean. It's, it's interesting how music is one of these things that like, I mean, pretty much everyone likes music, right? But it is interesting that, like he said, for such a simple thing, it's interesting how many people do make music their entire personality and not even just making music. People make the consumption of music into their personality or the consumption of media in general into their personality, whether that's music, whether that's video games, whether it's movies. It's a very interesting and kind of sad thing. Like if your whole personality is that you pressed play on a different song than someone else, or you pressed play on a different movie than someone else, I think that's a little bit unhealthy, right? Yeah, Marvel and Disney fans are guilty of this or Harry Potter fans. It's a little bit unhealthy. Like, I don't think we do that about food, right? Or maybe we do. There was like the bacon people back in the day. Anime, yeah, it's a weird thing that maybe only in the past 20 years or so, I feel like this whole thing where people turn media and consumption into their I entire identity, I feel like it's kind of a new thing. Yeah, foodies, that's true, that's true. But anyway, let's go on. Scrolling on your phone like a mindless zombie for over an hour a day, myself included. And you know, with such a pinpointed algorithm, it has basically made enjoying music much harder than it should be. For me, I'm a gatekeeper. So when I hear a song- I <laughs> Me too, brother. Me too. Proud gatekeeper right here. Been listening to for a while, end up on a bitch ass app like TikTok sped up with some nightcore bullshit. It ends up being so much less enjoyable. Like, I <laughs> Yeah, I mean, see, this is like such an interesting thing. Obviously, he's kind of joking, but it's a weird thing where people feel like they have ownership of the song. So he said, when I find a song that I like and people put it on TikTok, like, you know, turn it into some nightcore remix, I get pissed. But why? I mean, you don't own, you didn't make it. Like, I, I understand if you're the musician that made the song and people put out some like weird ass nightcore version of it that like, in your opinion, ruins the song. And that's the version of it that gets popular. I understand why you'd be pissed because it's like, well, that's my song and you fucking ruined it. And now the only version of it that people know is this shitty nightcore version. I get that. But if you're just a fan, it's not your song. Right? I mean, you didn't make the song. It doesn't belong to you. So the idea that people feel this kind of intense ownership over things that they didn't even make is a little strange to me. I cannot stand how low people's attention spans are. Like, they can't even sit straight and listen to the normal version of a song. But to be honest, all of this is besides the point. There is a much serious topic mm, okay. that honestly must be spoken about, and that's your music taste. I hate the fact that people will critique what sounds someone chooses to put in their ears. And there's right. one term that people who listen to music religiously will have a mm. temper tantrum for. Calling your music taste basic. <laughs> well, uh, I'm proud to be basic. Listen, it took me a long time to be basic because unfortunately, unfortunately, I have been listening to weird ass music like Morbid Angel and AC and fucking Have a Hedge and whatnot for 30 years. And it wasn't only until maybe the past, like, I don't know, the past 10 years where I discovered that it's great to be basic. I discovered that being a normie is actually great. Being a normie, being basic 
is the new hipster. Okay, people? That's what you need to take away from this. Being into obscure shit, that's predictable. That's boring. Everyone is trying to impress everyone else with all the obscure weird shit they know about. But I think it's time for us to start trying to impress each other with all the things we don't know about. Like when people pretend that they've heard of a band, I want to do the opposite. People be like, hey, have you ever heard of Pantera? And you're like, oh, what's, what's that? Oh, come, you must have heard them. No, I'm not familiar. What about Radiohead? Like, oh, is that a, uh, is that a Transformer? I've ne never heard of it. Not familiar. That's what I want to do. I want to start uh, trying to impress people with all the things I've never heard of. That term has got to be the equivalent pain of hearing DJ Khaled saying another one in every sentence. It's the equivalent pain of nails on a chalkboard. <laughs> this term will kill the soul of someone who is just trying to show everyone on Ox how much they enjoy something. It's oh, God. The person on Ox showing everyone how much they enjoy it. Like, bro, don't... Uh, one of my most hated personality traits is people who force their music taste on you. You get in the car with them and they'll like blast something that they know you don't like because they want to like bully you into liking it. Or like, dude, I don't like it. If you like it, that's fine. I don't fucking like it. Can you please just fucking leave me alone and just let me not like this thing? If you're into it, cool. But like, you can play this album for me a thousand times. I am never going to like it. So stop fucking playing it for me. They want to indoctrinate you into this church. I don't want to be fucking indoctrinated, people. Leave me the fuck alone. It's tossed around in every genre of music and to every mainstream popular. <laughs> Bringing scissors to cut the ox. The oh, I like that. I like that. I'm just not even, next time, I'm not even going to say anything. I'm just going to reach over and be like, oh, snip. And then just pull out my phone. I like that move. The artist. People have the logic that just because what you listen to is popular, it is basic and uninteresting. Like, it's popular for a reason. And just because yes. it's played a bunch of times doesn't necessarily mean that it is bad. And people- No, it's the op people. People. If something is popular, if there's millions and millions and millions of people that like the thing, chances are it's good. The fact that like 30 million people bought an NSYNC album and like 18 people bought the Bandcamp download of your shitty one-man black metal bedroom project and 17 of those were your friends and family members. The fact that 17 people bought your shitty music and 30 million people bought NSYNC's music, that's a sign that NSYNC's music might be better than yours. People clown on you for liking these songs instead of their unreleased or less mainstream songs and call you a fake fan. This definitely applies a fake to fan. any hip hop artist's fan base. And, and why are you a fake fan if you don't know you know, every obscure B-side. You know, the idea that there's real fans and fake fans is an interesting one. Definitely applies to Kanye West. I know, Kanye, okay. I know. It's not the best time to be a Kanye fan. But <laughs> it's not the best time to be a Kanye fan. Uh, I, I disagree. I think it's a great time to be a Kanye fan. <laughs> I mean, honestly, this is like something that would be on an SNL skit. Kanye in this fucking... It's not even a ski mask. It's a hood. Kanye in gloves and a ski mask, drinking a yoo on Alex Jones, praising Hitler. Like, <laughs> you couldn't write this stuff. One thing I can't stand is his meat-riding fan base. Like, people will try to gatekeep him like his music isn't the most mainstream and popular music of this generation. This is exactly what I'm talking about. So two things here. Number one, meat riders, the people that just will not shut up about trying to like convert you into a fan of their favorite artist. Like, bro, I don't like the shit you like and that's okay. Like, am I allowed to just not like this thing? Number two is people that listen to like really mainstream stuff like, you know, Radiohead or Tool or Weezer or something or Queen and act like this is like some sort of like obscure art that they're the only one that knows about. It's like, bro, it's Queen. Literally everybody fucking knows Queen. You don't get a fucking medal for listening to like one of the most popular bands of all fucking time. We're not impressed. If you like Queen, cool, like good for you, but I'm not impressed that you like this incredibly mainstream band. Like this is not obscure. Even his unreleased shit is mainstream. So Kanye fans, even yeah, his unreleased shit is mainstream. My favorite song can be Runaway or Ghost Town or All Falls Down. You want to know why? Because it's good. That's why it's popular. 
Fair. Another rapper yes. fan base that just annoys me is MF Doom. And honestly, uh. it's mostly the newer fans getting it. Rest in peace. Seems like a cool guy. But uh, yeah, this is a good example of, well, let's see what he has to say about MF Doom. Into his music. And there's nothing wrong with that. MF Doom is a great artist and deserves more attention. But these yes. newer fans are mostly from the past 12 months or so when people started finding about him on TikTok. Like the gatekeeping mm. is so unreal with his fans. But people act like just because he's underground, that his music doesn't deserve to be more mainstream. If we're talking about- Yeah, that's a weird thing when people like want an artist that they like to continue being obscure. Like if you actually care about this artist, why would you want that? Like, why would you want this guy to like toil in obscurity? Shouldn't you want everyone to, to like this thing? You know, so it's like there's two different extremes here. There's the Punishers who will like force this shit down your throat. And I want these people to leave me the fuck alone. And then there's these other people who like want their music to remain obscure forever. Meanwhile, everyone else in the middle is like, hey, if you like this, that's cool. If you don't like it, that's cool because I don't really give a shit what music someone else likes. I just listen to what I enjoy. About the most mainstream underground artist, then he's probably up there. They will call me a fake fan just because one of my favorite songs is Rap Stitch Knishes and not an unreleased King Gadurian song or whatever in his already underground discography. The point is, unreleased or less mainstream does not equal good. And for Correct. the love of God, stop with the all caps when you spell the man's name shit. It is corny and annoying. Just let me- It's one of these things where, like, the unstated assumption here is that if something is less well-known, that it's good. Or that it's better but in reality if something was obscure there's probably a reason for that like for example with lincoln park the b-sides that they put out recently i mean i think lincoln park is an awesome band and no disrespect to them but like or the outtakes rather from meteora you can tell why those didn't make the album because they're not as good as the songs that were on meteora right there's a reason why it's less known exactly if you lazy and not type it out if you think about it all artists are basic if we use this logic it doesn't necessarily mean it's bad. Steve Lacey, who's been in the music industry for a while now, has definitely had the worst of it when it comes to his artistic credibility. Steve Lacey is a great artist that doesn't deserve the shit he's been getting just because TikTok found about his music. I find it's, it so it's so weird to me how people like gatekeep TikTok. Like the idea that there's TikTok fans. And we saw this with Bad Omens, with Pierce the Veil, uh, Bring Me the Horizon, um, Lorna Shore. Like the idea that if you discovered this band via TikTok, you know, because you clicked on this icon on your screen, you're a fake fan. But if you clicked on this icon, then you're a real fan. Like, what the fuck? That makes no sense. Like, dude, everyone discovers music on their fucking phone. You're not like a real fan because you discovered it through the Bandcamp app instead of the TikTok app. What a strange thing to gatekeep. So funny how these newer fans can go to his tour and can't even sing the lyrics to his most popular song that blew up because of TikTok. You can so tell what? how pissed off he gets just because he has to deal with his music being over- I mean, it's true that there are people who are TikTok fans that only know the song that was popular on TikTok and, you know, they go to the show and they only sing along to that song. Well, so what? They bought a ticket. Like, they can enjoy the show however they want to. They're not obligated to go there and know every song. You know, there's tons of bands that I saw that I only know, like, one song from. You know, you're not obligated to know every song by every artist that you go see. I think that's so weird. Played and spread out to fans that can only sing 15 seconds of his chorus. I mean, Steve is a phenomenal artist. And it's probably yeah, I mean, I understand that sucks for him. They didn't even know the full song it was just the chorus of Bad Habit. It kind of hurts. I understand that that's frustrating from his perspective. And again, if he was to tell me that he was frustrated by it, I would understand. But as another fan, it's like, who are you to tell somebody else how to enjoy this concert? They bought the ticket. You know, they're allowed to do whatever they want. One of the most talented and hardworking artists in the last few years. But people don't give him credit for that. And instead, people only know him as a TikTok artist that made Bad Habit. Even his label made him put out the sped up version of Bad Habit on streaming. <laughs> but hey, even though Steve has lost his shit and he didn't want to be known as this type of artist, he's still getting that bag though. So exactly, played... still getting that bag. Is that such a bad thing? You know, it's like the conversation about one hit wonders. You know, people talk about one hit wonders like it's a bad thing. Well, isn't being a one hit wonder better than being a zero hit wonder? Like, yeah, I guess it's kind of frustrating maybe that people only know you for one song, but it's, it's at least they know you for something, you know? I mean, I would, I would be thrilled with that. He's out. 
but there definitely are artists who purposely try to gain success off of TikTok. I mean, I haven't heard one Lil Nas X song that wasn't marketed on TikTok. But let's so what? not bring TikTok's credit to all of his marketing. Yeah, I, but but so what? Why is that a bad thing? Why does it matter where people discover music? Like, I got into hardcore because I saw Suicidal Tendencies on MTV. You know, maybe someone else read about them in a magazine or whatever. Like, it doesn't fucking matter where you discover music. Like, the idea that, like, are you only a real fan if you were born with crust pants on and, like, you found a copy of their 7-inch in, like, the dumpster behind a fucking vegan restaurant. I mean, the idea of like gatekeeping how people got into an artist is so weird to me. I kind of feel like gatekeeping starting to go the way of the Buffalo in real life. It's only online. People are pissy. That's just what I've seen. Yeah, probably so. But I mean, it's still real. Like people are still doing it online and it's still annoying as fuck. Whether it's TikTok, Facebook, some CD you found, if you found their music, that's all that matters. Exactly. And this is true too. And let's face it, if anything, TikTok is more about music than MTV ever was. It's true because MTV basically stopped playing videos by the 90s or, or mostly stopped playing videos. So I just think the whole idea that like you're only a real fan if you discover music via one specific pathway is so bizarre. Because let's be real, we all know the main reason. Right now, it's easier than ever to get your music out and potentially yep. move up a block in your gated community and yep. make it big. I can name plenty of artists whose success wouldn't be without that app. Some artists yep. are fine with their music being mainly from TikTok and wanting it to be more mainstream and popular, and that shouldn't be a problem. I feel like artists that deeply care about their music want artistic credibility more than anything. For example, Tyler, the creator, completely switched up his style and reputation with Flower Boy and Igor. Bro, we well, you, you can't be so precious about this. It's like these artists that are getting mad because people discover their music a certain way. And like just the biggest takeaway to me about this whole conversation is stop giving a shit how other people consume music. Number one thing that people do that's irritating is like s stop liking that thing you like. Like, oh, you're you're a you're a poser if you like that. Stop liking it. Dumb. Number two thing that people do is, uh, why don't you like that thing that I like? Also dumb. Just let people like what they like. And number three is, why don't you listen to music in exactly the same way as I listen to music? Meaning like, oh, you have to listen to it on vinyl, not Spotify. You have to listen to it on Bandcamp, not TikTok. And then artists doing the same thing. It's like, bro, you should just be fucking thrilled that anybody in the world gives a fucking shit about your music at all. Like the idea of being so entitled that you're mad that people are listening to music on TikTok is like, get the fuck out of here, dude. You should be fucking thrilled that you have the opportunity to make a living creating music. To be so fucking entitled that you don't want people to listen to it in the way that they enjoy is like, just get the fuck out of here, man. Went from rapping about how he hates gay dudes to rapping about how he was gay all along. <laughs> That's right. He went from rapping about how much he hates gay people to rapping about how he was gay all along. How the turntables. In all seriousness, he realized how much his persona as an artist wasn't what he wanted it to be. And his love for music should be used to do something respectable and more serious. And sure, it that's, worked. I that's mean, fine. I mean, is probably one of my favorite albums ever. Even more recently with Lil Yachty. Bro was considered yeah. as a SoundCloud trap artist. I think this one sucks because Lil Yachty was so fucking good as like, you know, a SoundCloud rapper. And then he made this like boring ass rock album to please the critics. And I guess it kind of worked, but um, I just, I think his rock album sucks. He made brilliant SoundCloud rap. And then he made this like mid rock album just to please the critics. It's the same thing as like Job for a Cowboy. You know, they were so desperate for the approval of all these metal dorks that they went from being a great deathcore band to kind of a boring death metal band. And what happened to their career? You could tell he wanted artistic credibility more than anything. And you could tell that he had a deep love for music. This whole side of him was shown with such an experimental album, Let's Start Here. And honestly, it was way better than I expected it to be. Fantano even rated it as high as Dan. Of course he did. And like, but is this worth it? You know, like whatever. He should do what he wants and Yachty's rich. But just the, the larger idea to me yeah, is that pleasing critics is so boring. It's so formulaic. That That's the larger point to me is like to chase the praise of critics to me is 
like that's the least respectable thing that you could do to me as an artist because what matters is what the people think if you're a musician you should not give a fuck what i think you should not give a fuck what anthony fantano thinks or anyone else thinks like if the people like your shit that's what matters i don't matter i'm just one person fantano doesn't matter he's just one person make the shit that your fans want don't try to please fucking some random person on the internet you know, for one, because it probably won't work Two, because it's probably going to ruin your music. Man, exactly. That, that is truly selling out seriously, because we're not do going what to you want to do, bro, really want not to just to fucking please album. the critics. Honestly, it's great that artists experiment and try to make something that won't exactly appeal to some people. I feel like this gives artists a better reputation rather than being considered a less respectable mainstream artist. I think more artists should do that if it's their desire. All right. Most people okay. who listen to these types of artists, or even just music in general, are probably the most annoying people you'll ever yes. come across from. I'm not talking about an average music listener or a person who enjoys music a little bit more than others, like me, but people who make that shit their whole life. These are it's the same with sports, though. Just anybody who makes consumption into their identity like it's weird these people are annoying and it's not healthy i mean like you meet these people that have like a whole fucking room of their house dedicated to like some quarterback you know it's like oh this is my fucking tony romo room you know like dude this is kind of weird that you're like a 36 year old man with children and you have like an entire fucking room in your house dedicated to this dude that doesn't even know you exist. That shit's weird. It's the same thing as like K-pop stands, except K-pop stands are 13 year olds and you're like a 36 year old man. There are the types of people that make music their personality. Nobody wants to be around a person like that. These are the types of people that will call <laughs> your taste basic. These are the yes. same people who clown on you for listening to popular music from an artist. These are the same people that post their Spotify rap, their Apple Music replay, and they got over yes. 100,000 minutes. Then they will- And why do you give a fuck what these people think? That is the real thing that's baffling to me, is that normal people feel judged by these people. Normal people, like, actually try to please these fucking nerds. People, these are the most insufferable bottom of the fucking food chain. Like, these people have zero social currency. They have nothing going on in their lives. These people are fucking losers. You should not give the slightest fuck what these people think, okay? So if one of these people thinks that your taste in music sucks, that's a sign that you're doing something right. We'll say, oh, you don't like music like I do. Oh, you don't you're like fucking right, I don't. Like I do because I have 50,000 minutes listening to it. Correct. Maybe I actually have a life and I don't spend half of my day <laughs> with an AirPod in my ear. Yes. Seriously. Then these same people will wonder why they have hearing loss and tinnitus before they're an adult. And why they haven't touched a fucking tit in fucking six years. Maybe instead of like alphabetizing your fucking cassettes, you should go out and try to touch a tit. With consent, of course. Here's a crazy thought. Listening to music at full volume for 10 hours a day just might have an effect on your ears. The worst part is, I see it so much more often than it should be. I don't even know how you enjoy music at that point with the amount they don't. of hours you spend They don't enjoy to music. music. Like, I know those AirPods are nasty, bro. They don't even enjoy music. It's just a tool for them to basically compensate for their lack of a real personality. I feel like the introduction of those streaming service raps has really made things worse. Like, it's cool and all to see how many minutes you spend listening to a certain artist and just music in general. But honestly, who gives two we shits? Every yeah, year, who it's gives just a, a shit? Week where you see people just posting their rap on their stories, and it just gets so annoying. The one oh, part I'm sure once I post my Spotify rap, then everyone will shower me with praise and tell me how unique and special I am, and finally, everyone will give me the respect that I deserve because clearly there's nothing more important than having obscure taste in music. Part is that it just makes people want to listen to music for long periods of time, just so at the end of the year they can flex the amount of minutes they got. Like that what a shit flex. has got to be the smartest thing Spotify has ever created. And it turned out to also be the dumbest. Anyways, the big point that you should get out of this video is don't make music your personality. Yes. And don't be afraid to get into music you truly like. And don't Yes. I love 311. You guys know my taste in music. You know that I love a lot of things that you're not quote unquote supposed to like. So what? Listen to what you like. Don't give a shit what anyone tells you what you should or shouldn't like. Bandwagon on music others might enjoy, but not you. Popular or not popular. Doesn't bad matter. Or good. It doesn't matter. It makes you the happiest. Like what you like. I mean, if DJ Khaled makes you happy, then listen to it. Go so for yes, it. Yes, Kanye fans. I'm going to listen to Runaway. Okay. 
Well, there it is, people. Uh, good stuff. Ooh, I like this bad. guy. This is Why You Should Stop Making Music Your Personality by Vertaga. Excellent video. Give it a watch. And uh, if you've been making music your personality like I did when I was an insufferable fucking nerd in my teens and 20s, now is a good day to stop. That's what I think. What about Radiohead? Like, oh, is that a uh, is that a transformer? 